Hello, this is Professor Hildebrandt. Um, I've had some questions about uh, coming from Chapter 2, focused on the PPF and specifically the ideas of marginal cost and marginal benefit. So I thought I would just kind of show you by going through an example from the study plan um, in my lab, kind of how we work these problems. Um, so we have Harry. Um, and Harry can use his time, his resources, to either um, study for his economics exams, and so hopefully do better on his uh, in his class, or Harry can spend his time um, playing tennis. And so you can see his grade in economics is here on the vertical axis, and his hours playing tennis are down here on the horizontal. And so the first question says, well, what's Harry's marginal cost of tennis if he plays for five hours a week? What is it if he plays for seven hours a week? Um, and so to figure this out, we're going to go from four to six and then from six to eight. And so you can see that at four hours of playing, at four hours of playing tennis per week, his grade would be a 75% in the class. And at six hours of playing tennis each week, um, his grade would be a 70. And so that's a difference of 5% points. And then we divide that by two, because we're trying to get to the midpoint. And so we would get 2.5% would be the difference um, in Harry's, this is marginal cost. So, because again, we're, we were looking at a two hour block but if you're talking marginal cost, you're going one increment at a time. So we want to see what it is for a one hour block. So we're going to do the 2.5. And then when I hit enter, that automatically went to this check my answer down here. And, and so then it gives you an explanation. Yes, his marginal cost for when he plays five hours a week is equal to the opportunity cost of one hour of tennis when he increases the time he plays from four to six. So again, we find the marginal cost by taking the difference in those two grades, which was 5%, and dividing that by two. Okay, well now we need to do the same thing for 7%, which falls in between the six and eight. And so at six hours of tennis, he makes a 70% in the class. If he extends by two hours to eight, his grade drops to a 60%. That's a difference of 10%. Again, we want to know what it is for a one hour increase in tennis, so we divide the 10 by two to get 5% change in his grade. And again, it says, yes, this is correct. When he plays tennis for seven hours a week, um, his opportunity cost is going to be five percentage points. So we're gonna continue on with this question. Um, so Harry enjoys tennis, but he wants to get a high grade in his econ course. So the PPF is shown here. This is what it's possible for Harry to do. Okay, the grades that it's possible for him to make depending on the time that he spends playing tennis. Um, the PPF then illustrates the idea of marginal cost, that opportunity cost. As we move down Harry's PPF, the marginal cost is increasing and we can calculate those values. Um, and so that's what we need to do now because Harry is going to achieve allocative efficiency where marginal cost equals marginal benefit. And we have the marginal benefit curve here, this graph here on the right. Um, and so we just need to go through and calculate. And so we'll go from the grade at zero hours of tennis to two hours and then four hours six hours, eight hours, 10 hours. And again, we're comparing the grades. So at zero, he's at an 80%. If we move down to two hours, he drops to a 78. So that's a difference of 2%. We then divide that by two to get 1%. If we go from two to four, he then goes down to a 75. That's a difference of 3% divided by two is one and a half. If we go from four to six, his grade drops to a 70. See how these are increasing, which is an increase, a decrease, excuse me, of five divided by two, two and a half percent. 
Um, to get to eight hours, his grade drops to 60. Now it's 10 divided by two or 5%. And then finally, if he spends all of his time or all the time that's on this graph, the 10 hours, his grade drops to a 40, which is a 20% decline divided by two is 10%. And so again, we're looking for the hours of tennis where the marginal benefit and marginal cost are the same. Okay, so now that we know um, the marginal cost for each, let's compare over here to figure two um, with his marginal benefit. And, you know, let's, let's just pick one. Let's say we do five hours. Um, and so five hours, our marginal benefit would be seven, right, right here. Um, and if I look back at my notes, um, for five hours, when we moved from four hours to six here, our grade dropped from 75 to 70. That's a difference of five divided by two is 2.5. Well, 2.5 and seven are not equal, so that is not Harry's allocative efficiency. Um, let's look at seven. Well, seven would put us here um, at a marginal benefit of five, okay? And so then we are going to look over here where we went from six to eight. Our grade dropped from 70 to 60, a difference of 10%. Divided that in half, we get five. So our marginal cost is five. Our marginal benefit is five. And so Harry uses his time to achieve allocative efficiency playing seven hours of tennis. And if he does, what is his economics grade? Well, again, it's that midpoint between six and eight hours, and so it's a 65% grade. Okay, and so, and then this, again, this is how the study plan works. I highly, these are not for credit, but I highly encourage you guys to do these exercises, and you need to do them before you're trying to do your chapter homeworks and your unit quiz. Um, I think there's maybe another part of this question. Let's see. Here we go. Um, or wait, did I, was I already on there? Nope, we did that one. Okay. So it says, okay, Harry enjoys tennis, but he wants a high grade in his economic course. Okay, that's his, you know, the trade-off that he's facing here. Um, and we have these same two figures, the PPF that shows his uh, marginal cost and the limits to what he can achieve, and then the marginal benefit curve. Um, from playing tennis. But suppose now that Harry becomes this like tennis superstar and he's got huge income earnings um, from the sport. And so to answer the question here is what happens to Harry's PPF and what happens to his marginal benefit curve? Okay. Well, the limits to what Harry can achieve in terms of the trade-off between his econ grade and his playing tennis, um, that hasn't changed. Okay. However, what has changed is the marginal benefit, the extra benefit Harry receives from every hour of playing tennis. If he's now a professional tennis player earning high income, then every hour that he plays tennis is more valuable to him. And so Harry's marginal benefit curve is going to shift to the right. So we're gonna select an answer of does not change for the PPF, and shifts rightward for the marginal benefit curve. And then again, you see that we're correct and it's explaining that. Okay, um, and then the next question is similar. Um, we again have the original PPF and the marginal benefit curve, but this one says, uh, now Harry suddenly finds high grades in economics easier to attain. So without putting in perhaps as much effort or time, he's able to achieve higher grades. How does this impact these two graphs? Remember the PPF is showing the limits to what he can achieve. Well, he can now achieve more. So this is going to rotate upward um, where we can get higher grades. It's not gonna, it's gonna kind of pivot from this point down here at the bottom of the PPF. Um, it's gonna rotate up. The marginal benefit of playing tennis is, has not changed. So we're going to select an answer of rotates upward and does not change selection B. So again, you see 
higher grades easier to attain, so the PPF rotates upward. Um, and his marginal cost is decreasing. So his marginal cost curve, if we had drawn that, it would change. But his marginal benefit curve is not changing. Okay, and I think that was the last question. So I hope this helps some um, clear up these ideas of marginal cost and marginal benefit.